I'm Sarah Bird from Azure AI, and today I'm going to talk about some of our experiences implementing responsible AI in our products. AI is a disruptive technology, and most of the time as technology creators, we get to think about all of the positive disruption we hope the technology will bring. However, it's important that we also recognize that as with any disruptive technology, the impacts of the technology do not fall evenly on all groups of people, which is why we need to think about this potential impact from the beginning as we're designing our technology so we can get all of that positive benefit and avoid harmful downsides. At Microsoft, this starts with our responsible AI principles, which we use to guide our development of our AI systems and understand which properties we're looking for them to adhere to. We implement our principles in practice using a responsible AI process. The first step of this process is assessment, where we look at a technology and we understand what are the potential benefits, what are the potential downsides, what are the risks, what are the unknowns, and with this 360 view, we can understand what we need to do to develop the technology responsibly and what we need to do to enable others to use it responsibly. Finally, we're not done once we've released the technology. The world is adapting and people find new and exciting ways to use technology all the time. So we need to make sure that our system is set up to evolve so that we can learn about potential problematic examples or downsides, and we can adapt the system to remove those in the future. So let's dive into each step of this process to better understand uh, what we're learning and what it takes to implement this. So we look at this first step, assessment. Here, we often bring in uh, groups of experts and diverse stakeholders to really understand the potential impact of a technology. With that, we have some clear ideas about what we need to do to design the technology responsibly. And so let's look at an example of this. So let's look at custom neural voice, which is a new technology that we just GA'd in February. So here, let's listen to Alex Kipman, who's one of our executives who worked on this. Here's his regular voice. Down south in Brazil. Uh, all four of my grandparents were born outside of Brazil. They're all immigrants into Brazil. Now let's check out his synthetic voice. As I look back at this year, I am very proud of the progress we have made as a team. We have made incredible progress day to day across our people, customers, teams, technologies, businesses, and products. So not perfect, but pretty amazing. And there's a lot of wonderful and amazing experiences we can create from a technology like this. We can use it to create uh, new experiences in education and in entertainment, as an example. We can also use it to do things like allow a speaker to be heard in their original voice, but in a different language. So here, for example, we have Alex speaking Japanese. So this is a cool and exciting technology, but there's also potential downsides of this. And so when we did our assessment, we came out with two things that we need to really keep in mind as we're designing the technology. We need to make sure that we're protecting the listeners, the people that are hearing these synthetic voices from misleading content and experiences. We also need to make sure that we're protecting speakers from having their voices impersonated or improperly used. And so with that information, we're set up now to understand how we create this technology and where we need to focus. With impact assessments, this gives us a great tool to navigate the trade-offs and tensions that we find as we're developing a product, right? Responsible AI adds new considerations to our product development. And as with any considerations and criteria, we need to make trade-offs, we need to prioritize investments. And the impact assessment tells us what we're really looking at and helps guide those types of decisions. The next step is to then start developing the technology and look at what we need to do as the core technology creators. So what we found in a lot of our technologies is that fairness is 
one of the most significant areas that we need to focus. It applies across many of our products and is one of the core things we need to do when creating models. And so we have a process that we use to allow us to build fairness into our systems and make sure we have a principled approach to testing and mitigating any disparities. So the first step of this process is making sure that we identify the different factors in which may affect the performance of the system or the outcome in the system and make sure that we are testing for those factors and identifying the groups within the factors that we need to look at. Once we've identified what we need to look at for a system, we then develop an assessment test set, which enables us to actually understand how well the system is doing, looking at these different factors and groups. And so here we want to design a test set that captures the diversity that may be represented in a factor or group to make sure that we're really looking at all of the dimensions. Once we have that test set, we're then going to assess the performance of our system and mitigate any disparities that we find. Now, we want to make sure that this isn't a one-time activity or something that's done on the side, but is actually a core part of our product development. And so we make sure that we reassess and run these tests every time we're making model updates or releasing a new version of the model so that we are sure that they're passing their fairness goals. So if we dive into this deeper, we can look at three of our systems, speech to text, facial recognition, and spatial analysis. So we have uh, quite a range of technologies here. And um, what we're learning is there are some factors that we want to look at that are common across many services. For example, ancestry, gender identity, and age. However, there's other factors that may be specific to a particular service. For example, spatial analysis, which tracks people's movement through spaces. Um, mobility aids is a key thing that we want to look at. We want to make sure that someone who's using a mobility aid is still properly tracked through the system and the system works well for them. For speech to text, for example, however, we may want to look at uh, regional dialects or sociolects or uh, accents as another dimension. We're also finding that intersections are incredibly important and that many of the disparities actually arise when it, you look at an intersection between two different factors. So once we've selected these factors for um, each system, we then want to uh, select which groups we need to look at inside of a factor and go and actually collect data to develop that assessment set. Now, we need to collect data that's explicitly labeled so we have that information to actually understand if the performance is varying across these dimensions. We end up needing to look at more than just our top level factors and groups, but also make sure that we're controlling for other information. So this is an example from one of our recent collections where we also want to look at geographic region as an example here and ensure that we're actually controlling to have the diversity that we need in our test set. We also end up collecting additional metadata, such as education level, which helps us diagnose issues and if we discover disparities and make sure that we then uh, know where we need to do better and potentially go and collect more data. So once we've collected that data, we have uh, three tools that um, we can use to mitigate disparities, to assess and mitigate disparities. These are open source tools that you can use too. The first one is Fair Learn, which enables you to do that um, pure fairness assessment where you can actually look at the performance across different groups or the outcome across different groups. If you then want to dig in further and better understand why your model is making the decisions it's making, then you can use Interpret ML, which explains uh, your model decisions both globally or provides local explanations for particular instances. Finally, we've released a new tool called error analysis, which actually clusters your most significant sources of error to help you identify and diagnose what that core problem may be. So here, for example, you can see that there's a significant cluster of error, perhaps with people of a certain, uh, that are married of a certain education level. And that will enable you to go and look at those examples further and identify what you might need to do to mitigate. Once we've developed a system that is performing well for everyone and is fair, then we also need to think about 
how people are using the system. For a lot of our models, we're very low in stack. We're creating a speech to text model, for example, that might be used in many applications. And so responsible use and enabling others to build on top of our models is a key part of our responsibility. So if we look back at our spatial analysis example, which is a system that tracks people's movement through spaces to help you identify, for example, if there's a bottleneck in the store that's making it difficult for people to socially distance. Now, this is a, a powerful technology that can provide a lot of benefit. However, it's important for the people installing it that they understand how it was built and potential limitations of the technology so that it's not used in, thing, in cases it wasn't built for. So here are some examples of things that we recommend. For example, this shouldn't be used for real-time alerting because, uh, to prevent injury because it wasn't built with those kind of guarantees in mind. It also wasn't tested on people under the age of 18. And so if you're in a setting that may have many people under 18, you may want to do your own testing. It also has recommendations about uh, how, what frame and resolution you need uh, to be able to successfully use the system. So this is just one example from our responsible AI documentation, which is something we've released for all of our services that talk about the characteristics and limitations of the service, considerations when choosing a use case, what developers need to do to integrate the service responsibly. And so this enables people to much better understand the technology and the product that we've built and how to use it in their application. Now, in some cases, we need to go a bit farther and not just empower people to use it responsibly, but actually build additional mechanisms in to enforce responsible use. So if we go back to our custom neural voice example, we want to think both about protecting listeners and speakers. So let's look at what responsible use looks like in this application. So in this case, we've actually released the service limited access, which means that people need to apply to use it and we review the customer and their use case to ensure that it's a setting that meets our responsible use criteria. Once a customer has been approved for an application for use of the service, then we actually have them record, the, they select a voice talent and the voice talent records sentences that sound like this. In the end, 15 of the 16 trials gave the comparison group a placebo. So we want to make sure that the voice talent knows that when they're recording these sentences, they're going to be used to produce a custom synthetic voice. And so we've designed a disclosure for voice talents that explains the technology and how it works. So they're fully informed when they're making their decision about whether or not they want to participate. When we released the technology GA in February, we also added a new technical control, which allows us to verify that the voice talent was involved in the process technically in our system. So we ask the voice talents to upload a file that sounds like this. I, Seth Juarez, am aware that recordings of my voice will be used by Microsoft to create and use a synthetic version of my voice. So we use our speech to text technology to make sure that those are, they're saying the right words in the sentence. And we use our speaker recognition technology to match the voice to the voice in the training data to make sure that the person that's verbally acknowledging participating is also the voice in the training data. So in this case, you can hear it sounds pretty different. And so the outcome in our system would be that it would actually fail to train because there wasn't a match between the voices. Now, if we upload the correct one here. I, Jamie Burgess, am aware that recordings of my voice will be used by Microsoft to create. So that one sounds the same. And indeed, the training succeeds when, um, when this one is uploaded because there's a match. And so we know that Jamie was involved in the process of creating this. So now a customer has a voice, but we also still need to think about the listeners of this technology. And so in that same documentation I was talking about, we actually have design patterns for how you disclose that the voice is synthetic. We require that all customers either disclose this directly or it's obvious from the context of the application so that listeners know they're listening to a synthetic voice. So putting all of those pieces together enables us to create a technology that's responsibly developed and used. However, we still need to think about this last step, which is evolution. 
And so what we're learning here is we need a lot more innovation and in enabling people to uh, flag problematic examples, enable us to learn, design feedback as a core part of our product mechanism. And so with that last step, we have the information to constantly assess our product, understand the challenges it's facing, and improve our development overall. So I hope this helps you better think about how to develop your technologies responsibly. If you'd like to learn more, we have many great practices, tools, and technologies in our Responsible AI Resource Center. And you can also check out our AI systems in Azure AI.